one of the things that I find encouraging is that people are willing to <coughs> consider, and some of them are starting to pay. You know, Fox is part of News Corp, which owns uh, the Wall Street Journal. And uh, the journal's having very good success getting people to pay for content that they believe to be something they can't get anywhere else. And I think <coughs> one of the things we'll find in this migration to mobile is that, you know, the computer, if you think back, your own habits, it, most of it has been free, almost all of it's been free. And yet, w when you think of a, you know, a, any sort of phone or a Blackberry or an iPhone or now the iPads, you know, there's no, I mean, you can get some internet applications on them, but there's a possibility there to kind of migrate, I think, users to uh, a small cable TV kind of model where they'll pay for collections of content that's worthy content. Because I think that one of the bigger dangers, and this is sort of having been in the journalism field for a while, and I'm sure Penny would agree, there's, I don't have actual figures on this, but I think there's more information out there than ever, ever before, but probably no more journalism, mm -hmm. maybe less, no more fact-finding than before. And I'll give you an example. Five years ago or so, when I was recreating abcnews.com, um, I sat down with our investigative unit because I thought this is very unique content. Brian Ross does investigative pieces. We have, ABC had 20 people working in his unit at the time. And I thought, when I looked at the sections across the top, US, world, science, or whatever, they were pretty much the same as most of the other websites. And I thought, this stuff's pretty unique. And I said to Brian, in addition to putting his content up there, um, why don't we look around and find out the other newspapers yeah. still, or television networks, even worldwide, that had investigative units that were worthy investigative units. We found 20 yeah. <laughs> in the world that were worth linking to. I'm not suggesting there aren't more, but it might be two people or three people. I mean a genuine investigative unit like you might remember or read about from the old days. So I think one of the dilemmas is I'm encouraged as a journalist and a television producer that more people have uh, access to this information than ever before. And it, you don't have to go home and sit in front of the TV. You can get it on whatever your device. Or you can sit in the cab in New York and get it on the screen in front of you in the elevators or whatever. That's a good thing. But I think there's an uh, incorrect impression among some people that they're better informed. You know, it, it may just be the 50 best stories of the day that come out of newspapers and television networks that get passed around everywhere. And so you think you know all this stuff, or we're getting all this stuff, and I don't think there's necessarily any more than 10 or 15 or 20 years ago. It's the same stories, and I think, frankly, the fact that the pace of it has picked up, where every minute is a new deadline, has, mm -hmm. has made that situation a little worse as well, because people are willing to put something that's kind of half-baked, rather than wait for the both sides of the story or all sides of the story are really vetted out in a way you used to because the compet competitive pressures are such that someone will just, you may be working on something, you know your competition is working on it, and the other guy goes with it, and the rest of America hears, oh, NBC News reports this or that, and they may, you know, it may be complete, it may not be complete, and there's this rush to get things on, so the journalism kind of stumbles along while the technology just fires away. 